Good morning. Welcome to DeSoto United Methodist Church on this first Sunday in Advent. I hope everyone had a nice Thanksgiving. We have a few announcements. We are, as we are headed into Advent, there'll be at-home Advent resources um, handed out today after worship. Pick up a set of Advent table prayer cards and Advent wreath candles. And um, also we're in rehearsals for the youth and children for the Christmas play. It will be happening on December 11th at the 10 a.m. worship. And there'll be rehearsals um, this week and next week for the youth. And then it sounds like the youth have a really fun outing today to go see um, the Black Panther 2 Wakanda Forever movie. And so um, be at the church at 1250 to go on that outing. Pastor. Welcome to the Soto United Methodist Church today. Uh, today's the first Sunday of Advent. Can you believe it? It already started. <laughs> yeah. And uh, welcome to this worship through... Uh, in the sanctuary, through the Facebook Live, and then later on YouTube. I am, my name is Pastor Young J. Kim, and, during the, and after the service, I hope all of us can find hope, true hope, not just fake, true hope in Christ Jesus altogether. Now, um, uh, Boone family will come forward and to light the Advent wreath candle. Uh, we're going to do a scripture reading out of Jeremiah 33, verse 14 through 16. The days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will fulfill the good promise I made to the people of Israel and Judah. In those days and at that time I will make a righteous branch sprout from David's line. He will do what is just and right in the land. In those days Judah will be saved and Jerusalem will live in safety. This is the name by which it will be called, the Lord our righteous Savior. Every journey faces the unknown, and anxiety can sometimes overwhelm us. There is too much to do. Our lists are long. Our calendars are filled up. We worry that something will go wrong, or we won't end up in the right place or take the right route. Getting lost is a real possibility on a journey, and yet we claim hope for the journey because we follow the one who will travel with us and sustain us on the way. Isaiah says there is one who is to come who will be the fulfillment of all of our hope. The spirit of the Lord will rest in this one, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. We place our hope in this one. And I just want to add something on this first Sunday of Advent. We, sell, we light the candle of hope. We have hope because God is forever faithful. He, he keeps all the promises He makes to us. It's because of Him that we have hope. So we light this candle of hope to give us strength for that journey. Yep. Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, and God may teach us the way of hope. Oh, come, Emmanuel. Thank you so much. <laughs> Now, let us praise our Lord through hymn number 211, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. Oh, 
Seated. On Saturday, a week before, at the Club Q, a LGBTQ nightclub, a gunman opened fire and five lives were claimed and many others were injured. It was considered as a hate crime that was caused by a bias and hatred. According to FBI, hate crimes in the year of 2020 motivated by bias were 8,263, and their victims were 11,472 in the United States. The bias were race, ethnicity, ancestry, 61%, sexual orientation, 20%, religion, 13.3%, disability, 1.4%, and so on. These crimes caused by hatred have been um, per pervasive in our society, sadly. And these are only several sections of the news now, nowadays. There are so many violence, abuse, neglect, and even war in this world. So as we begin the Advent in this year, we await Jesus, the Prince of Peace, Imagine if we choose to follow Jesus to make peace in our family member, in, in our family, in our community, in our neighborhood, in our workplaces. Imagine five people around us decide to follow Jesus to make peace because of you, and it goes on and on. What, what's going to happen in our community? So I would like to invite you to pray for hope, for hope through Jesus and through each one of you and me. So, Camille will lead us to pray. Loving God, after you created the world, it was good before your eyes. But as human beings have been going wrong, there have been all kinds of crimes caused by hatred because of their bias. So many innocent lives have been claimed by indescribable violence. It seems there is no hope in the world. But as we begin Advent this year, we find true hope from Jesus who saved us from our sins and death. Help us to share this hope in the world so they can quickly see the light and thy kingdom come quickly. Come Jesus. Your servants are longing for you. In his name we pray. Amen.
Heavenly Father, thank you for calling us this morning to worship and honor you. We are living in the world that many people cannot find hope politically, economically, psychologically, or culturally. But Lord, we know we can find hope in, your, in you through Jesus Christ. In this season of Advent, help us to celebrate the first coming of Jesus and long for his returning, Maranatha, as we are awaiting him in our daily lives. Please give us true hope that we cannot find in the world and make this hope known to people around us through us. We also pray for those whose names are on our prayer list, those in our thoughts and those we are not aware of. Comfort the bereaved family. Give them the eternal hope in your kingdom. Free those who are suffering from guilt. Liberate them in your gospel of forgiveness. Shine your light to those in, dar in the dark so they can see your light at the end of the tunnel. Allow reconciliation where there is a conflict. Let your justice roll on like a river. Watch over our community as it is rapidly changing and give us welcoming heart for our visitors and new neighbors. Send us to our family, friends, and neighbors as your hands and feet for changing lives, transforming communities by reaching, welcoming, and engaging. We pray all this in the name of Jesus Christ, Prince of Peace, and who also taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Let us praise our Lord through hymn number 230, O Little Town of Bethlehem.
Sabrina. I invite the children forward for the children's moment this morning. We're going to sit like this to start out with. So hi, friends out there worshiping with us online. And we're going to start looking this way because there's some new things for us to see. So you guys want to turn around so we can see some of these new things that are, that are here in the sanctuary this morning. So what do you see? You see this table, right? And what's on the table? Oh, you're going to point out, you're going to, there's candles. Okay, what are you going to point out? We have an empty manger over there. There's also a wreath. What else? Do you, you and did you want to add something? Oh, someone saw pine cones. What did you see, you and? Yeah, the candles are different colors. What else do you see? And there are ribbons, right? Leaves. Different kinds of leaves. So we have decorated. What do you guys see? A Christmas tree? What do you see? Uh, and a wreath, right? Yes. So we have decorated the sanctuary for a season in the church that's called Advent. And we have all of these. Yes, we have. And all of these things are made out of something called evergreen. Evergreen, which is a type of tree that keeps its leaves all year long. Evergreen, right? Even when, it, when other trees are dying, it stays green. What else do you see? Uh, Just a second. Oh, yes. Those are, those are also very important parts of our worship space. That's right. And so in this season of Advent, it's a time that we are getting ready for someone to be born, for baby Jesus to be born, right? And to help us prepare, to help us prepare for Advent, we have some resources that you can get if you maybe you got them last week we're, i will answer your i'll let you answer your question after we get done um we maybe you got them last week and we also have them today we have these cards that come in this little plastic case we actually have candles too they're smaller than the ones that are on this wreath but we have some candles that you can take home and you can make an advent wreath at home and all of these things help us prepare. And so before we hear our scripture this morning, I just wanted to share with you inside, there's some information about Advent. It says that the Advent season begins four Sundays before Christmas. And so this is, when we count back from Christmas, this is the fourth Sunday before Christmas. And Oh my goodness. So you have a way that you're counting to Christmas and we count to Christmas using the wreath. So every day, every Sunday, we are going to be lighting more candles as we get closer and closer to Christmas. And Advent means coming or arrival because we're awaiting the coming. We're awaiting the arrival of baby Jesus. That's right. Baby Jesus. And so I want, if you didn't get any of these um, last Sunday, I hope that you will because this first Sunday we're talking about hope. And so in our Bible story today, there's some people who have hoped for something. Let's listen to see how their hope might have been answered. Let's listen as Mrs. McKinsey reads our scripture to us today. This morning's scripture comes from the book of Luke, chapter 1, verses 11 through 13. An angel from the Lord appeared to him, standing to the right of the altar of incense. When Zechariah saw the angel, he was startled and overcome with fear. The angel said, Don't be afraid, Zechariah. Your prayers have been heard. Your wife Elizabeth will give birth to your son, and you must name him John. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. So, in our Bible story today, there is a couple. Their names are Zachariah and Elizabeth. And they have been hoping to have a baby. And an angel comes and tells Zachariah that they are going to have a baby. And tells them 
that they need to name the baby John. That they need to name the Now, you might remember, we've heard a story before about somebody who likes to wear funny clothes and eat bugs. Do you guys remember who that is? It's John the Baptist, and this is the baby. This is the baby that Zachariah and Elizabeth are going to have. John the Baptist is about to be born in this story, and John the Baptist is going to help prepare the way for Jesus. Does that sound wonderful? It's, it's very wonderful. And so we are going to use part of the prayer that is from, that's about hope that's in this Advent prayer card. So will you guys repeat after me? Okay, let's pray. Dear Lord, Dear Lord fill, us fill us with hope. As we look forward, As we look forward. To, all to all that you will bring us during this Advent season. This Advent season. Amen. Amen. All right, friends, let's go to Children's Church. You know what? I forgot. I we're going to sing our song. Oh, help me All sing, together, guys. I am a child of God. I, I am, am a child, child of God. God. And he has sent me here. Has given me an earthly home. With family kind and dear. Lead me, guide me, walk beside me. Help me find the way. Teach me all that I must do to live with him someday. Please keep praying for this precious young, young children. And the choir will um, sing the special music. We want to be ready.
Merriam-Webster Dictionary, the definition of the word hope is desire accompanied by expectation or of or belief in fulfillment. Desire accompanied by expectation of, of or belief in fulfillment. In this light, do you see hope from a seven, 73 year old lady to have a child? Do you see hope? According to USA Today, in September 2019, a 74 year old woman Mang Magayama, sorry, uh, Magayama Yaramati from so southern India gave birth to her first children, twin girls. Oh. <laughs> she said, she said that not having a child was a source of guilt in her society, in her community. Quote: People looked at me with accusing eyes as if I had committed a sin. She said, the time, uh, she said to the Times of India, and, but they said they were the happiest couple in the world. They didn't have hope, but with the birth of children, they find, found hope. Let us pray. Almighty God, your word is perfect, but your servant is not. So please be with us from now on. Open our hearts and minds so that we can learn your will together. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight. O oh Lord, my rock and my redeemer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. After the introduction, uh, four verses of introduction, um, Luke um, wrote about uh, the two couple. To one old couple, Zechariah and Elizabeth, in Luke's Gospel. And Zechariah was introduced as a priest. A priest was the religious leader in this religious society. So he was a leader. And then he belonged to a priestly division of Abijah. And Elizabeth, his wife, came from also in a priestly family, Aaron's family. So and then the Bible says about them, they were both righteous before God, blameless in their observance of all the Lord's commandments and regulations. So they followed all the regulations and they were blameless and they were very good people. Decent job as a leader of the community and then good people and it sounds like a perfect family. But after that, the, the Bible, the scripture told you, told us about um, their concerns. But they had no, they had a sadness in their family, like most of the families, and that was they had no children. If they chose to not have one, that's okay, but it seems they wanted it, they really wanted, but they couldn't. Because Elizabeth was unable to become pregnant and they seem to be um, losing their hope and they both were very old very old now no children uh, meant no one who would succeed their their family name family in that time and then in ancient Israel if you don't have a child it was considered as a disgrace in the society then in um, the first century in Middle East, children, was, children were more than just descendants. They didn't have any assisted living, as you know, a nursing home um, that has professional nurses to, who can take care of you. Instead, when they got old, they rely on their children. And no you know, they must have been ages to be grandparents, but they didn't have any children. So if you can laugh because of your children or grandchildren, and if, if you are so tired because of their noise or something, you should know you are so blessed. Okay. 
It seems they had no hope in this sense, in this sense. According to Pew Research Center, quote, one, only two in 10 Americans say they trust the government in Washington to do what is right. Since 2007, trust of the government has not um, surpassed 30%. It seems the majority of the Americans cannot find hope from the government. According to the Forbes, J.P. Morgan predicted a recession in the United States in 2023 due to a combination of factors like the ongoing war in Ukraine and rate hikes, interest rates will be raised, and global recession is in, in, uh, imminent. The, the, the treat of um, COVID-19 uh, uh, variant will be uh, continued, be continued. So it seems the economy of the coming year is not that hopeful, by, according to the experts, economic expert, experts. And according to Mental Health America in 2022, 10.6% of youth, which is about 2.5 million, 2.5 million youth cope with severe major depression. And 4.08% of youth in, a, in the US reported, reported having a substance use disorder, alcohol and drug. And many young people in the United States hardly see hope in their lives. So, Without hope, how can we manage? How can we move on? Without hope, Zechariah went to work. Zechariah's division was on duty, and he was chosen by lot to go into the temple of the Lord and burn incense. Then an angel, Gabriel, um, appeared to him and is standing at the right side of the altar of incense. And when Zechariah saw him, he was startled. And, oh, you know, can you imagine? You know, I come to the sanctuary by myself, no light, and I pray. But imagine while I was praying, bright light shining right, right in front, next to the altar, and then looking down at me, and then Yongje. <laughs> oh. <laughs> So he was so frightened. So the first, first thing the angel said was, don't be, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Because he was afraid. Don't be afraid, Zechariah. Your prayer has been heard. Your wife, Elizabeth, will bear you a son. And you are to call him John. Wow. He's going to have a baby. And it's a boy. And then um, the angel announced him, his name as well. What a kind angel he was. <laughs> then he will be a joy and delight to you, and many will rejoice because of his birth. For he will be great in the sight of the Lord. He will be filled with the Holy Spirit even before he is born. He will bring back many of the people of Israel to the Lord their God. He will go on before the Lord in the spirit and power of Elijah to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. And he was announcing what he's going to do in the future. So what was the reaction you know, supposed to be you know, by Zechariah? Hallelujah, right? Or wow, amen. But instead he says, how can I be sure of this? Can you imagine trembling? <laughs> he was trembling in fear. I don't believe it. <laughs> Zechariah said, how can I be sure of this? Okay, I was like, okay, then what other version says? And it says, how shall I know this? And in Greek Bible, by what will I know this? By what will I know this? In other words, I need proof. I need proof. I can believe this. Why? He says, for I am an old man. 
for I am an old man, and my wife is well advanced in years. There is a reason that I cannot believe. I'm an old man, my wife's old too. So it's, but it's so funny that the angel said, your prayer has been heard. Your wife, Elizabeth, will bear you a son. Seriously? He prayed about it, but doesn't believe it. But we are not sure when he prayed, because the angel didn't say. Your prayer last week was heard. No, he didn't say anything. So we don't know when he prayed. Maybe he, maybe he was young, way younger than that. I don't know. Maybe he thought there was a possibility for her to bear a child. If the angel announced it as soon as he prayed, he might have been said, thank God. But now, instead, he says, what? I need proof. By what? Will I know this? By what? And we remember Abraham. When Abraham was called by God first at, the age, at his age of 75, 75, he obeyed right away. Go from your country, your people, and your father's household to the land I will show you. You know, he didn't even show him where to go, but I will show you. I will make you into a great nation. And so Abraham, Abraham went as the Lord had told him. The promise of a great nation should begin with his own children, but he had not yet. When Lot left him, his cousin, um, and his, his nephew, Lot left him, then God reminded him of his promise. Look around from where you are. To the north and south, to the east and west, all the land that you see, I will give to you and your offspring forever. I will make your offspring like the dust of the earth. So that if anyone could count the, the, the dust, then your offspring could be counted. That's a good reminder, but still, he didn't give them any offspring yet. Time went by, but still Abraham didn't have any child. So Abraham thought he might not have any hope. And he said, Sovereign Lord, what can you give me since I remain childless and the one who will inherit my estate is Eliezer of Damascus? You have given me no children, so a servant in my household will be my heir. So he is losing his hope. Do you see that? But God convinced him again, this man will not be your heir, but a son who is in your own flesh and blood will be your heir. He took him outside and said, Look up at the sky and count the stars if needed, if indeed you can count them. So shall your offspring be. Abram believed the Lord and he credited it to him as righteousness. So he believed. Finally, he believed. But when the time went by, 10 years, Abraham. Abraham still had no child. So Sarah was like a desperate. So he, she gave her um, maid, Egyptian maid, Hagar, to Abraham, his, uh, her husband. And Hagar um, bore to a son, bore a son, and her, his name was Ishmael. And she was born and when Abraham was 86 years old. So maybe they thought promise was fulfilled. But God said, this, this is not the one that I will fulfill through. And time went by, and Abraham became 99 years old. God reminded him promise by blessing Sarah, who was 90 years old, but Abraham doubted. He says, Abraham fell face down. He laughed. And said to himself, Will a son be born to a man a hundred years old? Will Sarah bear a child at the age of ninety? And Abraham said to God, If only Ishmael might live under your blessing. But God said, 
No, I will establish my covenant with him as an everlasting covenant for his descendants after him. So finally, when Abraham became 100 years old, he had a son, Isaac. And he has been waited, God's promise fulfilled for 25 years, if you do the math. When he was called 75 years old, now he is 100 years old. God's timing and our timing are different, right? We really want things to happen right away. But we have to wait and wait sometimes with faith. But we see Zechariah. It seems that Zechariah already gave up on his prayer. He prayed about this, his own child, but he seems to be giving up already. By what will I know this? It seems impossible. I need proof. So the angel could have, could have said, yes, you may. You, you will have a proof, which is, the angel said, I am Gabriel. I stand in the presence of God, and I have been sent to speak to you and to tell you this good news. Now you will be silent and not be able to speak until the day this happens. Because you didn't, did not believe my words, which will come true at their appointed time. You need proof? Okay, you won't be able to speak until you see the sun. Okay. Until you see everything is fulfilled. Now, hope was given. Hope was given to Zechariah, but he didn't believe it. Hope was given to us, to you and me. Hope was given to what was given to the world, but not everybody believes in this hope through Jesus Christ. God says, "You will be saved if only believe." In his name, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. This is hope, trust, belief, right? But not everybody believes it. Even though the hope was given to Zechariah, he didn't believe it. And many people in the world doesn't believe, they don't believe Jesus Christ, the hope through Jesus Christ. By what will I know? I need a proof. I can't believe it. We are saved when we believe in Jesus. Is our salvation that easy? I don't believe it. Yes, it is too good to be true, right? So, so many people throughout history in the world, they wanted to do something to earn to earn their salvation. If I do good works, good deeds, this hard, I will be saved. If I have, a, have suffering for my salvation, I will be saved. They tried and tried. But no. Our salvation is given to us as a gift. All we have to do is just embrace with faith. Just believe. That's the gospel. That's the good news. The hope is given to us, but not everybody believes it. Jesus is hope. Can I get an amen? amen. <laughs> Jesus is hope. For those who are suffering from guilt because of our um, wrong choices, mistakes, or failure, because he forgives us. And Jesus said to her, neither do I condemn you? Go and sin no more. He even shed his blood to forgive us. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. Jesus is hope for those who are lonely, because he is a true friend who never forsake us. Instead, he gave up his life for us. Greater love has no one than this, than to lay down 
What's life for his friends? You are my friends. Jesus is hope for those who are, who, who are lost in darkness because he is the light of the world. I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me won't walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Jesus is hope for those who are weary and burdened because he will give them true rest in him. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Jesus is hope for those who have fear of death because he is the resurrection and life. I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me will live even though they die. Everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Amen. Amen. As the angel Gabriel announced, Zechariah's wife Elizabeth gave birth to a son. When he named the boy John, as the angel told him to do, he was able to talk again because he believed. His name is John because he believed all um, the angel told him now. Because now he believes all the words. And later, this boy was called the, as John the Baptist, who prepared the way for Jesus and baptized Jesus as he is beginning his public ministry. The hope is given to us. Today, the first Sunday of Advent, I really pray that each one of us can hold this hope in Jesus Christ all together. And believe in this good news in Jesus, and you will find hope in Him. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this good news through which we have hope. Lord, please be with us so that we can truly believe that Jesus is our, our, our hope. And through us, change lives, touch lives, and make a difference. We pray all this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us give our gift to the Lord. Please stand as you're able and face the cross as we sing the doxology. Father, we thank you so much for this moment that your children gathered in your presence and gave you offerings and tithes. Use this offering for your glory, touch lives, save lives, and then make a difference. And bless those who gave you so that they can be witnesses of your abundant blessings and love. As we going forth, please be with us so that the gospel can be spread through us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please be seated. Anybody want to share good news? Gil?
Please welcome them. Okay, Liam. New cousin was born. Okay, congratulations. Two? Uh, two days ago. Okay, congratulations. Are you excited? Yeah. <laughs> okay. okay, Gail. So I have to finish the worship before 11.15. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Linda. Yeah, that's good news. Anything else? Do we have any birthday boys or girls? No. Okay, go ahead. Your birthday? Okay, would you please stand? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Lisa. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. Thank you so much. <laughs> okay. okay. Um, last Sunday, we had our charge conference 2022 in Heritage UMC, and it was almost like a meet and greet type of conference, and it went well. And last Sunday at 4 o'clock, Christmas decoration, you know, as you can see, many about... I couldn't contain all of them. Some, some left already. <laughs> but almost 30 members and then friends and neighbors came uh, to decorate the church. So you see the beautiful decoration in the sanctuary. So thank you so much. And another good news is that we have hope in Christ Jesus. So let us praise our Lord through hymn number 238. Angels have had a heart on, heart on high. Thank you. Oh, 
save land your aid, while our hearts in love we praise. So Let us pray. As you are going forth, holding this wonderful good news in your heart, may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit strengthen you and be with you all forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Go in peace and hope, my brothers and sisters. <laughs>